happy Sabbath happy day. and a happy day. Happy Sabbath. Uh, the Lord has been good to us and uh, has enabled us to come to yet another Sabbath day. Uh, allow me to welcome our online viewers uh, as we start today's uh, lesson study. And with me is my sister, Sister Zipporah Nyangwechi. Happy Sabbath. How was your week? My week was good and I thank God. Thank you so much. We also have with us our elder, Elder Zablon Mabea. Happy Sabbath. Before we start, allow us to have a, a word of prayer. I'll ask Sister Zipporah to pray for us. Shall we pray? Mm. Our Heavenly Father God, we want to give you glory. Thank you for this Sabbath morning. You have given us an opportunity yet again to look into Scripture. We have started a new quarter, a great quarter indeed, because we shall discuss issues related to the great controversy. And as we delve into the lesson, my Lord, I want to pray that your Holy Spirit may abide with us. The Lord, you may speak through us. The Lord, you may enable us to understand and be able to communicate according to your will. Thank you because we have online viewers. I pray that, Lord, you may also abide with each one of them, those who are watching and those who are listening, that, Lord, together we may understand and do according to your will. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Zipporah, for that prayer. Uh, allow me to invite uh, Elder Zablon just to give us a quick recap on the theme on which this quarter's lesson is based. Thank you. Uh, welcome viewers. Uh, this quarter, we are doing one of our very interesting uh, topics, a topic that touches each one of us. The great controversy uh, that uh, started somewhere in heaven and was brought down to earth and all of us now, the entire humanity is involved in this controversy. As we saw last week, our lesson was discussing about the war behind all the wars. Mm -hmm. And basically, this war that is started in a very uh, unlikely place in the heaven was brought down here to us. And all of us now, at individual level, even collectively, we are involved in this controversy. Mm. And many things are happening, challenges on this earth. The beauty is that in spite of what is happening, as a result of what happened in heaven, God has assured his people of victory. He will <laughs> remain committed to him. And as we are going through last week, uh, week's lesson, we are able to see that God has not abandoned his people and he loves us and his desire is that we may overcome and be victorious in this controversy. Thank Th you. Thank you, Elder. And it is in that theme of God not abandoning us that we get our memory text for today. Uh, we can read uh, from Isaiah 41, verse 10, and I will read. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So the lesson starts and grounds us on a theme of God not leaving us alone. That is the Amen. great assurance as we go through uh, this great controversy. The, at the beginning, we find Jesus is talking to his disciples. They have gathered together. They've just been experiencing uh, certain uh, issues. And Jesus steps out and the disciples follow him. And we find Jesus talking to them about Jerusalem. Can we look at uh, Matthew 24, verse 2? Matthew 24, verse 2. In Matthew 24, verse 2, Christ is speaking in parables. He's 
talking prophetic message, yet looking at the situation that is. And this is what it says. Let me start from verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I want to read a little from the lesson itself. And this is what it says. It says, Suppose you are a herdsman tending goats on the hillside of the Mount Olives overlooking the city of Jerusalem, and you hear Jesus speaking these words to his disciples. What would go on in your mind? For his disciples, it was difficult to comprehend as the settling, the setting sun gleams off the golden domed temple and reflects in snow whiteness of its magnificent marble walls, Jesus emphatically states that assuredly I say unto you, not one stone shall be left here upon another. The disciples wanted to show Jesus the temple. But Jesus is telling them that this temple will come down and no stone will be left uh, un, un, on, on, top, of on another. top of another. So Jesus is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. But he is actually giving a foreshadow of Satan's strategy both to deceive and to destroy God's people at the end time. Mm-hmm. The disciples were so concentrated on the beauty of the temple as it was. They were so concentrated on the magnificence of the temple and the earthly things. But Jesus is telling them <clears throat> that it is that strategy that the devil has to deceive you of a seeming permanence while we are on earth, mm. yet his intention is to destroy. If you read in John uh, 20, in John 10.10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm-hmm. But he gives you a feeling of permanence against what uh, God is, uh, is telling us that the end shall come and I've sent my only begotten son so that we can trust in him so that when these things happen, we may be found ready that no stone will be left untouched. Do you have a thought in that, Sister uh, Zephora, to add on to that section that I've just been discussing? Yes. Yes. I, I, will, I will say this. Mm-hmm. Jesus does not look at things the way human beings do. Mm-hmm. While the disciples looked at Jerusalem and they were amazed and they admired and looked at how, how beautiful it was, Jesus wept. It's very uncommon mm-hmm. for, or it was very uncommon for the disciples to see Jesus weep. Mm-hmm. But when you go down, you realize that Jesus is weeping because he knows was what is coming, which the Israelites and the disciples did not know. Mm. That the disciples and the Israelites had lived in comfort, mm. but had kept away from the will of God. And a time had come that the grace of God was going to be withdrawn and these people were going to be left on their own. Mm. And Jesus is looking at the danger that these people were going to face and yet they were not aware. Mm. Me and you may be basking and enjoying uh, the, the things that we have on earth and looking at how much we have in terms of wealth, in, uh, in terms of resources and all that, not exactly knowing that outside what we see, we need to do things according to the will of God. Otherwise, the grace that is extended to us, a time will come, mm-hmm. just like the Israelites, and the time of uh, the, 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 the time the temple was destroyed, that this will be withdrawn and we shall be on our own, and it will be too late. My prayer is that we get 
taught by the Holy Spirit to remain watchful, to do according to his will, so that we do not get caught and we are just like the Israelites uh, at the time of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Let me read at the bottom of the study. It says, Satan's twofold strategy is both to deceive and destroy God's people. Mm -hmm. What the evil one fails to accomplish through persecution, he hopes to achieve through compromise. That is the subtleness of the devil. God is never caught by surprise, and even in the most challenging times, he preserves his people. Amen. And that is the assurance that we have that even as we go through this great controversy, even as we go through these uh, pains and persecution, God's assurance as given to us in the memory text guides us and holds us that we know that he is able to take us through. Can we read from Luke uh, 19, 41 to 44? 41 says, Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, mm -hmm. saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make of your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and label you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. So the fall of Jerusalem is actually a foretaste of the time of the end. It was difficult for the disciples to even appreciate what Christ was talking about mm -hmm. because Jerusalem was the city. Mm -hmm. It was the city of God. Then a question comes, does God allow the devil to rule over us and allow evil to overcome God's love? Where is God's love when uh, Jesus is saying that this will happen over Jerusalem, the city of God. Does it mean that God doesn't care? Elder Zavlon. Thank you, Ella. You know, the central issue yes. is about your soul and my soul. Yes. The devil wants to destroy us. Yes. And God, by his great mercies, wants us to be preserved. Mm. And indeed, as we read, we read the memo text, which I find very apt. And maybe I can just repeat for the sake of, 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 of us here. He says, fear not, mm -hmm. for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Mm -hmm. I will strengthen you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, as Isaiah is writing, mm -hmm. One thing which is very clear that God chose Israel mm -hmm. to represent him to the world, but they failed. And when they failed, God punished them and they were taken to captive. Mm -hmm. But then God again sends this word of assurance that indeed I'm with you, even when, you go to, even when we are going through these challenges. And one thing is very clear. As God's children, Christians, we are actually God's representative on this earth. And God is assuring us that one, he will be with us. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, I'm with you. Number two, he has also established a relationship. You know, when you know somebody at a personal level, your dad or a friend, you know, it is easy to communicate freely. And also God now gives us an assurance that even when we are going through these challenges, he will give us the strength to overcome. Mm -hmm. He will give us even the victory of a sin and death. And, and so then, as we read this text, mm. the thing is we know we are held captive in this sinful world, mm. but we are not alone. God is present. Amen. What, what is the significance of Jesus weeping, Sister Zipporah? Uh, uh, he is telling a story 
of what will happen. True. And he goes ahead to, to weep. weep. What is the significance of Jesus weeping? Um, and how does it relate to God allowing us to make our own choices? One, um, my own perspective, Jesus is weeping because of the love mm. that he had for humanity. Mm. That looking at it, that he had labored so much to bring these people to reconciliation with God. Mm. Starting with the prophets mm. coming to him, but mm. they had totally rejected him. Mm. That love he had for humanity, that indeed I have done my best, but these people are going to perish. Mm. It, 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 it shows that a time had come that the grace God extended to humanity had to be withdrawn. That indeed God is not like a policeman who forces human beings to do what he wants them to do. Mm. However, he gives them grace. Mm. But that period of grace expires. Mm. And Jesus was like, the time has expired mm. and these people are going to face danger. The destruction is mm. what was driving him to shed tears. Tears, not of joy, but that these people are going to perish. Even when so much had been invested in reconciling them with their Savior. So then it is recorded that many died in the destruction of Jerusalem. Yes. And indeed Jesus wept over these ones also because in that also there were those that were lost, mm. that did not have eternal life. But he's also weeping for the end when many would have still refused to accept him True. as his as their personal savior. Mm -hmm. Again, allow me to read uh, a line from here. Uh, it says, God does not always in intervene to limit the results of his people's choices. Mm -hmm. He allows the natural consequences of rebellion to develop. God did not cause the slaughter of the innocent children in the destruction of Jerusalem. The tragic death of the innocent was an act by Satan and not God. Mm -hmm. Satan delights in war, for it stirs the worst passions of the human heart. Mm -hmm. Down through the centuries, it has been his purpose to deceive and destroy and then blame his evil actions on who? On God. God. Let's look at uh, Matthew 24, 15 to 20. Uh, the Bible say, reads, yes. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them, let him who is on the house of not house top not go down to take anything out of his house and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes but who to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days and pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the sabbath what do you read uh in this reading Jesus is giving an instruction. Mm -hmm. It tells us that he has not left us without giving us a way out. Mm -hmm. So what when Jesus is saying, flee to the mountain, what is he saying? Thank you, Ella. Uh, maybe I'll also just go slightly back. Yes. To, we combine it with the Matthew 23. Yes. Uh, from verse 37. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus is lamenting for Jerusalem. Mm. He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, who often I wanted to gather, I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, 
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, looking at that as we uh, go to chapter 24, mm-hmm. Jesus is really pained and he is in anguish because of the coming destruction. And he makes a very, very passionate appeal to the people of Jerusalem. One, he wants them to appreciate God's love, to repent and accept his gracious invitation of mercy. But they refused. And as he's weeping, Jesus also talks about this destruction. The destruction was not only for that temple, but I think Jesus also was able to be held all through the ages, Mm. the rebellion Mm. of humanity Mm. in every age. Mm. And so he was able to see the rejection Mm. of his love and grace to those he came to save. Indeed, he came to save us. Mm. And this is why he was able, because he was making a passionate appeal. Mm. And then now as we are coming to the destruction of Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. and as you have pointed out, is that the destruction of Jerusalem was not only that temple, but it was also uh, looking forward. or He was bearing forward what would happen even at the end of it. Mm. So he came to save us. His heart broken because those he came to save us, we have not heeded to his invitation mm. of love. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. So Christ did not leave them without a way out. Never. He tells them, run to the, the mountain, the mountain of God, mm. where you will find protection. protection. Sister Zipporah, if you read Psalms 46 verse 1, could you then go and tell us a little bit about God's providence and how he applies it in the salvation of the people of Jerusalem and how does this tie with his providence for our salvation in the end time? Uh, thank you, Elder. Allow me to read Psalms 46 verse 1, yes. which says, Psalms 46 verse 1 says, I, God, is our refuge. Sorry, let me start again. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So the writer is trying to show us the nature of God. Mm -hmm. Who is God when we are in pain? Where is God when we are suffering? That God indeed is very near us and is able and willing to see us through to make us overcome the times and the challenges that we may find ourselves in. I I want to go ahead and also indicate that um, even in our present times, you know, he was talking to the Israelites then, or the the psalm may have seemed to address some group. Mm. Even in our present times, Mm. God is able to save us or save his own. This salvation, this protection, as we have seen during the destruction of Jerusalem, is only available to those that are willing to stretch their hand to God so that God can lift them out of trouble. It is likely that we may say no. Mm-hmm. If you look at the story of the, the, the Jews during the destruction of Jerusalem, we are told that God himself, caused confusion when he told them that when you see these times, he gave them signs of the destruction of the temple of Jerusalem. And he Mm. told them that when you see these signs, flee to the mountains. And indeed, we see confusion being caused such that the Romans that are coming with Titus to destroy the temple of Jerusalem, Mm. uh, midway, they abandon their mission and go back. And the Jews in anger followed the Romans, Mm. just in revenge. Mm. And at that very time, those who were faithful to God took advantage of this uh, opportunity and they 
uh, flew mm. to the mountains and indeed they were saved. And therefore, this Psalm 46 verse 1 indeed is very true because God became their refuge and their strength at the time of trouble. And indeed, as they flew now, those who remained behind, the Romans came back in full rage and killed them mercilessly. Mm-hmm. We are told children, uh, elderly, rich, poor, everyone, they killed them and some of them, those who, who survived, were taken as slaves. Why? Because they did not look to God for protection. So indeed, Elder, that's what I want to say. And I want to read this statement that yes. God is sovereign and mm-hmm. overrules events on earth for the ultimate accomplishment of his divine purpose. Although, although at times God alters his original plans based on our human choices, his ultimate plan for this planet will be fulfilled. That whatever God has promised, mm-hmm. like this one, that is our strength, our refuge, will be fulfilled. No word that God speaks will go unfulfilled. So ours is to avail ourselves to this um, sovereign God to be able to get this protection, to be able to be preserved, just like the few Mm. who heeded to his call were preserved. Mm. Thank you. You want to add to that? Yes, I want to add. Yes. Indeed, God preserves his own people. Mm. And as we go through this, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, it brings mm. out very, very fundamental issues. God had given Jerusalem a sign. Mm. And faithful Christians who followed mm. or obeyed the voice of Christ mm. were able to see the sign. Mm. And they obeyed and they took off. Mm-hmm. The choices we make mm. when we listen to God's word mm-hmm are very significant because they have consequences. Mm-hmm. Those who hid the God's word, they took off. And then those who remained, they were completely destroyed. Right. Mm-hmm. Number two, what we are seeing here also, mm-hmm. and think coming out also and uh, when Christ was really uh, so um, suffering about the fate of the children of Israel, is that sometimes when we are so rebellious, God actually withdraws his protection from us. Mm. And then the other thing I'm seeing here is that in spite of our sinfulness, the sinfulness of the children of Israel, whatever was happening, mm. God still does everything mm. in order to save us back. And as we read, this it's section there, from, uh, Hebrews 11 from 35 to 38, Yes. actually it comes out very clearly, mm-hmm. uh, listing a number of heroes mm who obtained a very good testimony, a good report. Mm -hmm. And although they experienced a lot of challenges, torture, Mm -hmm. but they all remained faithful to God and they were able to be victorious in the face of challenges. What made them to stand out? They trusted in their God and they knew that God was with them, leading them, and they put their faith in him. So the key issue here for us is to remain faithful, even to the end. But there's also something that I've noted, that the sovereignty of God Mm. means that his ultimate plan will come to pass. And that doesn't matter whether you get killed in the process, Mm. because in in the Hebrews 11, you'll find it also talking about those they never saw it, experienced it then, but they are here Mm. in the book awaiting for the finality Mm -hmm. of God's uh, salvation. Mm. So it means that, it doesn't mean that those who are killed today, God has forgotten them. Mm. There is the ultimate resurrection and dwelling with God in eternity. So his sovereign plan will continue even to the end as he has it. Because the evil one will not uh, defeat God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness amidst uh, persecution. Can we see how the Christians, uh, the first Christians in the book of Acts 2.41 how they went through 
persecutions and what held them together. 241 says, mm-hmm. Then those who gladly received this word were baptized, mm-hmm. and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So, so what is uh, coming out? And I want us to read Acts 4, verse 4 and 31 also, is that us, these Christians, started experiencing persecution. The numbers were adding. Mm-hmm. So what was making the numbers add when people were seeing in this group, you are going to be persecuted, but the numbers were, mm-hmm. were adding. Mm-hmm. What is it that was making the numbers add? Can we read Acts 4 verse 4? which says, mm-hmm. However, many of those who had the word believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. And verse 31? Verse 31 says, And when they had prayed, mm-hmm. the place where they were assembled together was shaken, mm-hmm. and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Mm-hmm. Chapter 5, verse 42 says this, And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So we, we are seeing the disciples are going through challenges, but they ceased not to teach. They ceased not to preach. Their faith remained firm. Yes. And it is this faith that those they were preaching to, was looking at and saying, these people are not giving up. And because of their faith, the people uh, continued to add and accept uh, salvation. Sister Zipporah, what would you say in this, when we look at these verses and the challenges that the disciples were going through and how The people were responding uh, in all of these. Why wasn't fear of death causing them to run away from the disciples? Yeah, thank you, Helda. The last verse that we read, yes. we said or we realized that these people stayed in Jerusalem and they were empowered mm-hmm. or they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit gave them assurance, made them realize that Amidst the challenges, mm-hmm. still God remained their refuge and their strength. Mm-hmm. And so they kept going. We are told that they faced a number of temptations. They faced a number of challenges. They were imprisoned. They were persecuted. Some of them were killed. Mm-hmm. But because Jesus was in them, mm-hmm. they were able to stand the test of the times. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we fail or we, 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 we fall. Because we depend on our own. Mm -hmm. It was not by their own making that they were able to do so. Because indeed, the persecutions, the the, the sufferings were intense. And some of them even lost their lives. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they were able to stand, it tells you that indeed, that is what is expected of every Christian. God does not assure us that if we remain faithful, we are going to be Uh, free of problems. Problems would be there. But what is expected of us is to welcome Jesus into mm. our hearts. Mm. So the indwelling of Jesus Christ in our hearts will help us to continue serving him in spite of the times that we shall find ourselves in. The courage these people had came from their dependence on God. If you read um, the same Acts chapter 8, Um, verse one uh, on you. I just want us to have a feel of mm. the kind of persecutions they mm. faced. And uh, verse one says, I want to read that just a few of the verses from chapter eight of Acts. Verse one says, and now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, 
and made great lamentation over him. Remember, Stephen was stoned to death because of his faith. And for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house mm. and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. You see, Stephen is being uh, taken for, he has been murdered because of the faith. Mm. And others are being dragged and beaten and, you know, all forms of havoc. If you went to the book Great Controversy mm -hmm. and you read chapter 2, you will see the kind of persecution that some of them would be pulled to the public places mm. and they will be covered with animal skin mm. and they will be left to the dogs to just, uh, you know, uh, right. hold them or, you know, eat them up, you know, mm. and, uh, and destroy them completely. Mm. And this was done in public places so that some people made fun of it. It was a form of entertainment as men and women of God were being killed. But it was also meant to scare the others who wanted to join the faith. Yes, it yes. was meant to scare. But instead yeah. of scaring, yes. people who looked and they said, these people must be serving a really God. Mm -hmm. The faith and the courage and the strength that they have to overcome mm -hmm. this temptation mm -hmm. means that there is a force behind them and there must be a God. And so instead of many running away from the faith, they were pulled to the faith by the fact that these people remained faithful, strong, in spite of what? And so, therefore, I, 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 I believe that if the same church that we are in today remained faithful, strong, in spite of the challenges that we face, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, our acts and, and, and our conduct also going along with what we preach, mm -hmm. we will draw many to the church in spite of what we may be facing. And, uh, and Maybe I'll just to add to that one. Yes. In the power of the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the resurrected Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. And you know, as we read um, Acts 7, mm -hmm. verse 54, it says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God mm -hmm. and said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man is standing at the right hand of God. The power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. They waited upon the Holy Spirit which was promised by Jesus Christ. Mm. And the Holy Spirit gave them the power to be able to proclaim with, with boldness. Mm. This power of the Holy Spirit is also available to us today. Amen. That is the lesson that the church of today, the end time church, need to depend upon mm. the Holy Spirit rather than our own means to draw men to Christ. If we allow the Holy Spirit to come and work in us, men will see his power in us and will be drawn to uh, Christ. Besides their faith, these disciples had certain activities that they also carried out that drew uh, men to them. Elder Zablon, could you take us through Acts 2, 44 and 47 and just highlight to us what it is that the, the Christians, the early Christians were doing that added to their numbers immensely? Thank you. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 44 onwards. Now all who believed were together mm -hmm. and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with the one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. You know, uh, these believers, mm. first and foremost, recognize that they are brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm. They are sisters and brothers in God's family. Mm. And because of that, we see they did Everything together. Mm. Uh, this the, that's the Christians in Jerusalem. 
and all that they had, they shared. Mm. And I think what comes out here, they shared actually the benefits of their gifts. Mm. And so what we see here is that God's family works best when they work together. Mm-hmm. So unity. Unity, yes. Yes. When they work together. Yeah. Number two, mm-hmm. a health Christian community. Mm-hmm attracts people to Christ. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And indeed, as they worshiped together, mm-hmm. uh, shared, mm-hmm. they were able to manifest the uniqueness mm. of their family. So they became a family, yes. a family of believers, mm-hmm. and lived as a community, mm-hmm. and took it beyond them to those who are around them. Mm-hmm. And this, in doing this, they were living out Christ's example yes. mm-hmm. because this is what Christ was Christ doing, mm-hmm. compassionate actions towards others. How can we emulate this in today's church? What kind of activities can we engage in uh, that will attract people to the church uh, by just meeting their needs? What areas for us, say, at current community, can we engage in mm-hmm. uh, to reflect this character of Christ? Sister Zephora, you want to? Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, yes, one, I want to say that indeed the early church went in to support each other and the community around them, not only spiritually, but in all ways. We can see that even they shared according to need which means they will buy for each other clothes. They will make sure everyone had shelter. They will also even make sure that each one of them was healthy. Some of the things that we can do to support ourselves within the church and also those outside the community. For example, if we come up with um, medical camps, that is a, a service that we can hold here in the church and welcome members of the community to come and get free checkups and also treatment. We can come up with a school. We may come up with um, medical or um, medical and um, wellness centers where we teach about what types of food are good for our bodies. How can we live healthy? Mm. I was listening to one of uh, renowned speakers and they were saying that uh, these people not only preached the word of God, but they made sure that people around them understood what healthy living entails. And so, other than just giving them food, you know, you can give food, Mm -hmm. they also taught Mm -hmm. on what foods to eat so that you can maintain the body of God as a temple of the Holy Spirit the way it is desirable to. As Adventists, as current community, we can do that. We can hold workshops. We can teach. We can preach. We can give material help. And we can also live according to the way in which we are preaching. Can people see love in us? Can people uh, see what they can emulate? Remember. Can they see Christ in us? Can they see Christ in us? These people emulated Christ and they lived as Christ. So today as Christians, we are supposed to do the same. It is in vain, even if you help someone, and yet people cannot see love in you. People cannot see Christ in you. So first of all, let us emulate Christ. Let's have Christ in us. And then the rest we can do. We can do wholesome support to the needy, starting from preaching the word and going down to... So the, the gospel of Christ is a holistic is gospel. A, true. Elder Zablon, how does this fit into the great controversy? First, let me also add to uh, what my sister said. Yes. God has given us a very unique opportunity in this region. Yes where we have over 20,000 young people in the neighborhood, yes. in the institutions. Yes. And most of these young people are going through many challenges. Yes. And indeed, what the devil is trying to do is to mar the image of Christ in them. Mm. 
Yes. And Lord, the Lord has given us an opportunity for us to be able to minister yes. to them yes. and restore the image of God. Amen. And be able to minister to them in their mental, emotional, and also their mm. spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how does it fit in the controversy? Mm. The controversy is all about Satan wanting to destroy and to drill people. Yes. But God, again, on the other side, wants to bring us closer to him, mm -hmm. restore us, yes. and give us an eternal kingdom. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as we minister, mm -hmm. our burden, mm -hmm. our concern mm -hmm. is that people may know God's eternal kingdom. They may know God. They may love this God. What did Adam lose at the Garden of Eden? Beautiful question. Adam, when sin entered, yes. the whole perception yes. of God's goodness actually yes. was blood. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the process, he was separated from God. Yes. Then this is why God came yes. to be able now to reconcile man yes. Yes. to himself, yes. to restore us mm. to his original design for us. Because when God was creating Adam, the Godhead sat together and said, let us make man in our own image. image. Satan attempted and continues to attempt to deface the image of God mm -hmm. in man. Mm -hmm. Only God could come again mm -hmm. to restore that image in man. Mm -hmm. And so Christ, who is God, came that he may restore the image of God in man by example. Amen. He lived the fullness of God's image for us to see. And therefore, these disciples, in doing this through the indwelling Holy Spirit, who is God? The Holy Spirit. They were able to show the image of God to the people. Amen. And the people could not withhold but to come yes. and join. Yes. And this is the part of the great controversy. So when when the, you are doing this as a church, when you are trying to bring back the image of God, mm -hmm. certainly the devil will not be happy and will be at war. This mm -hmm. is why he brings afflictions, pain, and all this so that Nobody is able to see the image in, of God in us who are believers. I want us to go ahead. How is the legacy of love instilled in all of this uh, that we have been reading about the disciples and how they worked and how the devil kept challenging the Christian communities. How do we see the legacy of love? For God is love. And at our title at the onset, we were talking about love or selfishness. Mm -hmm. Elder Zablon, you want to take yes, us through um, that? As we read John 13, yes. from verse 34, he says, A new commandment I give to you, mm. that you love one another. Mm. Uh, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Mm -hmm. By this, all we know that you are my disciples. Yeah. If you have love for one another. Amen. You know, Jesus Christ is talking about self-sacrificing love. Mm -hmm. And I think there is no any better argument uh, that God is present with us mm -hmm. than when we reflect our love for each other. Mm -hmm. And what prompts this love mm. is because we have seen what God has done for us mm. through Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, Christ took our place on the cross because of his love mm -hmm. to restore us. Mm. God who created us came again and died for us in order to redeem us. Mm. And so we have been given this example mm. that as we have clearly in focus the love of God for ourselves then for, for God for humanity humanity mm -hmm. this is the same love we need to extend to our brothers and our sisters and even those who are not believers because this is the legacy that God has given us and uh, in the contrast therefore what do we see 
much as the devil is after destroying us, but God, by his grace mm. and by his mercies, mm. he wants to save us. And we see the foundation of this mm. is the love that he has for man. So what is the, the controversy, the internal controversy in a, in a Christian? Uh, uh, that which comes back to the, the title of our lesson today, love and selfishness. So there is also a continuous battle mm -hmm. in the Christian. Mm -hmm. And that is why when our sister talked about the power that the uh, disciples had, had to come from outside. It had to come from the Holy Spirit mm. dwelling now inside then to bring out that power. Mm. Because the controversy in us internally is what uh, Paul talks of, the good that I want to do, I cannot do. do. But the evil that I don't want to do, that I, I do. I because our nature after the fall is a nature of sin. And it's only when Christ comes in that we are able to show love. And so Christ is calling the disciple to a new legacy, a legacy of love. And why is he calling? Because we lost it. When we lost the image of God, we lost the ability to love one another. Mm. For love is an attribute of God himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sister Zephora, do you want to add to this subject of the legacy of love. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk of legacy, it means uh, we are used to having um, a thought that somebody lived and uh, left some, something behind. Mm -hmm. What can somebody be remembered for? Mm -hmm. And f Christ can be remembered for his love, mm -hmm. for his, um, and, 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 and the continuous grace that he has extended to all of us. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we are commanded. I want to read um, First John chapter four, verse twenty-one, yes. and uh, and it has a, a new twist. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to add to what the uh, elders read, mm -hmm. and this commandment we have from Him, mm -hmm. Him being Jesus Christ or God, that He who loves God must love His brother also. Mm -hmm. That indeed we cannot claim to love God if we do not love our brothers. Mm. And that is the legacy as Christians that we can live. Mm. You know, sometimes we struggle to live the legacy of having been the most famous in terms of riches, in terms of politics. But as a Christian, that legacy of love, we are called upon to embrace. Mm. So that when we are long gone, or when the records are being referred to at the resurrection morning in heaven, mm. we shall be found among those that recorded love. Mm. And if you read First Corinthians chapter 13, mm. you will see the attributes of love. Mm. Love is kind, love, love is patient, love does not keep a record of wrongs. It has given us so many attributes of love, and that is who Jesus is. But above all, love has the ability to change those around us and attract them to our faith. It is only love. The writer gave us two powerful pandemics mm. and gave us a story of how the Christians then went down to serve those who were affected by these pandemics. They risked their lives. Mm. Sometimes I can't imagine that they used their bare hands to stitch and do or give service to those who were affected. Mm. And uh, Sometimes they could contract, contract diseases. I want us to have an example of the COVID-19. Mm. When it happened, mm. maybe most of us ran away from each other. Mm. If you could hear someone even coughing in the church, mm. you will not be very comfortable mm. sitting next to that person. But you see in these pandemics, because of the service the Christians gave, unsparing, unsparingly, we see so many converted and uh, uh, I want to read one, one of the statements here that at the height of the second great epidemic, the writer is calling it an epidemic which occurred around 260 AD. Uh, there is a person there who wrote a lengthy tribute to the heroic nursing efforts of local Christians 
many of whom lost their lives while caring for the others. Amen. But that was not in vain. They would still have their lives re restored at the resurrection morning. So indeed, in the line of service, in the line of duty and serving in the in the vineyard of God, in spite of what we go through, it will even mean losing our lives for the sake of another. Jesus lost his life for the sake of us. We can also risk for the sake of salvation of those that we are next to. But what we get out of it, we may lose it now, but eternally we will regain it. And that what what and that is what gives me hope that indeed love does not have boundaries. Love has great power to draw many to the church. And that is what the writer is saying, that these nurses did so much and most of the of our brothers or Christians who um, showed this kind of love to one another, the legacy they left is still uh, something we can refer to and is something we can emulate. And uh, with, the, with, the, with the help of the whole spirit, we can make it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Zipporah. Elder, you want to add something? Yes, as I'm saying, looking at the topic, mm. the central issue mm. is about God's love for us mm. and what he wants us to do to respond mm. to that love. Mm. And therefore, this love mm. compels God to send his own son to die for us. Mm. And indeed, as Christ commanded the disciples, once we have been infected by this love, mm. then we also become passionate, mm. expressing this love. Mm. And this love mm. is what will be able to mm. bring Amen. men to Christ. Amen. And that's the responsibility we have been given. Mm. Thank you. The legacy of love. God is love. love. Christ came to model for us God's love. love. And he tells the disciples at the end that stay united, love one another, for in doing so, men will see that I am in you, mm -hmm. even as the Father and I are one. Christ is saying, without love, we cannot attract people to him, mm -hmm. for he is love. As we close, there are one or two questions I want us to uh, ponder over. What value does persecution serve? Or why do you think God allows his people to suffer uh, at times? Having gone through all this, is there a, a role that persecution does in the Christian's life? One is that we are in a sinful world. Yes. Persecution will be there for those mm -hmm. who love Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy is not happy mm -hmm. that we have chosen mm -hmm. the side of Christ who is victorious. Mm -hmm. And as we go through this, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. one thing we need to be very clear, that mm -hmm. God will not abandon us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as we go through this, mm -hmm. it will not leave us in the same place. Mm -hmm. It will edify us mm -hmm. and strengthen us. Mm -hmm. Just as uh, Peter was able to gaze at heaven and say, I see the Son of Man. Mm. So when we go through this, let's focus heavenward. Mm. That way we remain strong and edified. So our faith will grow yes. as mm. we are persecuted. Amen. Just yeah. like they say uh, that uh, when uh, an awe is picked from the ground that has got uh, great uh, gems in it, it goes through a lot of fire. Mm. And when it finally comes out, it's beautiful, it's expensive, mm. it's, uh, it's, it's, it starts to draw people to itself because it gleams in the light. And so it is that uh, persecutions and trials are not to take us away from God, Amen. but they are to strengthen our faith even as the disciples' faith was strengthened. Mm -hmm. And our role in this uh, whole thing is to model Christ so that those around us may be able 
to see him in us and be drawn to him through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We must welcome the Holy Spirit into us for only through him can we be victorious. So brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of today's lesson study, the central issue, love or selfishness, we must remember that God is love. Mm -hmm. And love is an outward-oriented action. Mm -hmm. And so he gave us his only begotten son so that we can experience that love that we lost when the devil convinced us that God did not love us. And Christ modeled that love in our view so that we have a legacy on which we can follow. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, throughout this lesson study. Uh, join us again next Sabbath as we look through lesson three, Light Shines in the Darkness. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Can I ask uh, Elder Zablon to pray for us as we close? Thank you. Shall we pray? Gracious, loving God, our Father in heaven, we are so humble, O oh Lord, as we reflect upon your great love for each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, who died on the cross in order to redeem us and to restore us unto you, O oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, even when we go through trials and challenges. Heavenly Father, for the assurance that you will not abandon us. Your presence will go with us. And above all, Heavenly Father, you are preparing us for your eternal kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. For we ask in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.